Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so yesterday I made a goofy error. I titled number six as more time for the unsaved. I don't know how I did that, but somehow I left the no off of that. So just a, a reminder, I guess, is there is no more time for the unsaved to get saved after Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven. Anybody that teaches anything else, you can write them off as unsaved, as false prophets. All right, and this world is full of them. And now, let's, um, I, I thought, well, you know, that's a good topic to talk about. The false prophet. Okay, so let's get into that. And before, I guess, the very first thing I want to start off with is here in Ezekiel 33. It's interesting, in my opinion. Um, let's see. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. Let's go. Let me just start. I don't know where to start here. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a, my, a man of their coast and set him for the watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blows the trumpet and warns the people. Then, whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. Now think about this in correlation with the warning of the Word of God and how we should be applying it, or, you know, if you, assuming you're saved, right? How, how I should be applying it uh, in warning you all that the end could be at any moment now. There's nothing prohibiting the Lord from coming this day. In the day that he does come, whether it be this day or the next day, there will be very few people saved. Meaning, all these people that are claiming to be Christians, are claiming to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, they are all liars and deceivers, and they're all unsaved. And we can use the Word of God to determine who is not saved. All right. Let me keep reading. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand I so I consider myself as the watchman and I'm blowing the trumpet let them that have ears to hear hear all right it, it would be a bad thing <laughs> a very bad thing if I didn't blow the trumpet if I didn't make the warning So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and then and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked man from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. All right, so I love this stuff, man. This is great, right? This is amazing, incredible, very, very interesting stuff. All right, so this is... Just to give you an idea, this is what I'm doing. I'm warning 
anybody that has ears to hear that the end will come fast and when the end comes there will be very few people saved and right now there is nothing prohibiting the Lord from returning and so as uh, you know you if you've watched uh, you know any of the videos I've done on this you you would know I'm very adamant about this and I'm very detailed about this that in Matthew 24 when Jesus is asked about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many many people saying that they believe in Jesus Christ and yet deceive many and these people will grow in numbers they'll continue to grow and multiply and grow and grow until there comes a point to where nobody on the earth will be saved everybody will be deceived but God will shorten those days except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened all right so again uh, it we're being warned over and over and over and over come on buddy of deceivers and growing deception evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so this deception is growing and growing and growing to a point to where God allowed things to play out the way they are there would nobody be saved all right but for the very few of us that are saved uh, God will shorten those days come on buddy all right and just like it was there's only eight souls saved in the days of Noah what makes you think there will be more than eight people saved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven eight people that are still alive right uh, come on man Jeez. I'm being attacked here all right so again God will avenge his own elect which cry out day and night unto him though he bear along with them I tell you that he will spend avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on the earth all right so the deception is gonna grow and grow and grow and grow and so I want to go here to second Peter chapter 3 you've probably heard me talk about um, you know a couple of things here I think uh, what was the one thing that I what? Oh, no this is two I don't know what I'm, I don't know where I'm at excuse me hey you you've heard me talk on three pardon pardon me let's go to three real fast Alright, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Alright, so this is another example of what we can see happening right now. This world is full of scoffers and mockers. Alright, saying, where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation well see they think God is slack when it comes to his return but he's gonna God's gonna come fast and when it happens it's gonna be a terrible day for all the unsaved people billions and billions of people that are alive 
will be killed. And it's interesting to me, people want to look at me as the bad guy. Well, I don't think you know what the bad guy is capable of. All right. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and into the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So the world came to an end in the days of Noah. Now, the heavens and earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And verse 8 is just an interesting uh, verse for me uh, in particular because... I, it says, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Yet yeah, you see all these people so insanely ignorant. They say, well, one day equals a thousand years in Scripture, and then they'll point to this verse. No, you got it backwards, man. It's a thousand years is one day. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Huh? Exactly. This has nothing to do with Bible prophecy at all. Not any, not even a little bit. This ain't nothing to do with Bible prophecy at all. This is about God and how he sees things. He can see a thousand years as a one day. He can see one day magnified. And spread out as a thousand years. That's it. That's all that means. And so, what we might think as God taking his time, he's not taking his time at all. At all. He's long suffering to us. For sure. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, to turning it to. Faith, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? This is, has nothing to do with turning from your sins. Rather, turning to faith. And you turn to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. But, you turn to faith in the Lord Jesus Jesus because you need a Savior. The day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night. It's going to come at a moment just like right now. And when Jesus comes, it'll happen very quickly. And at that point when he comes, there is no more opportunity for the unsaved to get saved. No more time. Okay? Now back to 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's take a look at this. So there, were for, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Talking to you. You the viewer. You. You means you. Who privately, or privately, shall bring in damnable heresies. Damnable heresies would be teaching this idea that if you're not saved, you can wait until after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. That's a damnable heresy. That's as evil uh, teaching. That's as an evil doctrine as it gets. You can't teach anything on earth that is more cruel than this idea that unsaved people can wait until after Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven. It's the most insanely wicked doctrine on earth today. And I, I don't think it's even close. But it's, it's so incredible because... 99.9% .9 of the preachers preach this idea. All of them in your 
local community churches. They all preach it. They all preach this idea that unsaved people can wait until after Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven. And so that that's by that we should know, I know, you should know also, that we are very near the end, so near that it could happen today. It could happen right now. It could happen at any moment. There are very, very few people in this world that are saved today. Now, I don't think you could have said that 40 years ago, but you can say it today. And it has real strength behind it because the evidence is overwhelming. Very, very few people are saved today. Very few. Even denying the Lord that, that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, having a harmful effect, especially in a gradual or subtle way. Many shall follow their pernicious ways, their subtleties, their subtle ways, their pernicious ways. Many, not few, many. That means the majority, overwhelming majority, which will grow and grow and grow until the end. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Let me think about one great example is all these people today preaching against eternal security. It's crazy. It's crazy. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil. Oh, you believe in once saved, always saved, you're going to hell. That's the doctrine of devil. They call it evil. The idea that Jesus can save you forever. It's evil. And, of course, the, these people are so lost. They wouldn't know the truth if it hit them over the head. Okay, and through covetousness, covetousness, all right, this, the desire, okay, let me see if I can, the desire of uh, wanting things that don't belong to you, is a strong desire to have something, especially something that belongs to someone else. Exactly. It can also be described as an extreme greed for material wealth. Yeah. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, feigned, insincere, simulated or pretend, pre pretended, fake with fake words they're the fake preachers with their fake words making merchandise of you goods to be bought and sold making merchandise of you so they, they just want your money whose judgment now of a long time lingers not and their damnation slumbers not for if God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked and that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds 
the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But, chief, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Think about that right there. That, that right there, that alone applies to over 99.9% .9 of the people in the world today, doesn't it? Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved for ever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lust of the flesh. Through much wantingness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Are you catching that? For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, you think about all the people this applies to. They lure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantingness. Want, am I saying that word right? Oh, no. Wanton... I want to say want on this, but it's, oh, it's not going to let me. Well, who cares? Intentional bad behavior that shows the lack of concern for the negative consequences. Wantonness. The chairman this week condemned the bank's wantonness toward other people's money. We all felt strong dismay and horror at such an act of wanting. All right. It's not rocket science. Okay. Those that were clean escape from them. Let me go back. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantingness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Let me make this clear. This is not about somebody that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and then is saved and then goes back to believing, or I'm sorry, into um, living worldly. This is about people that they start to go to church, they start to feel good about themselves, and then rather than believing, 
in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that they need a Savior, they feel so good about themselves because that's what the church does for people. The modern day church that is just an oven for hell. They teach people to be good people and so these people escape the pollutions of the world and come to these ovens of the devil and they start to feel good about themselves and they think hey I feel good let's go back to doing other things that also made me feel good all right in other words never coming to the trust of the Lord Jesus Christ never never coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ this is what that's talking about it's not talking about being saved and then losing your salvation all right that's stupid all right let's give one example let's say you are saved and then you go back to uh, drinking and fornicating and uh, committing crimes or whatever well you're not gonna lose your salvation you could be turn into a serial mil a murderer don't matter you're not gonna lose your salvation you're stuck Chuck but the consequence God's gonna lay a heavy burden on you and you're gonna be convicted at the thought of committing sin the Spirit is working on you and this is why we're given encouragement to be confident that the Spirit which has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ Philippians 1 6 being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ okay so just for clarity man don't let these deceivers confuse you just believe what it says what you see right there on the screen or what you hold in your hands these are words that come directly from God above All right, once you have that faith then your eyes ought to be open and you ought to be able to see it very clearly all right, so anyways, the false prophet. All right, we are warned big time, aren't we? Big time in this chapter alone. You know, go back to Matthew 24. False Christ, talking about popes and false prophets, talking about false teachers. Now, one thing I want to go to, I wanted to, I'm just going to make this real quick because I'm, I think I'm over my 10 minute limit. All right, real quickly, let's go to Revelation 19. It talks about the false prophet. All right, the same event is repeated in chapter 20. Make no mistake about that. But the false prophet here, I, I, it's important, I think, to understand that this is not um, a sound doctrine. Whatever you want to imagine, this is not a preacher who preaches a sound doctrine. It's not a preacher who preaches uh, the truth at all. This is not a preacher at all. This is about false teachings of God. And there is no truth in any of it. All right, the, the false prophet does not teach truth whatsoever. None whatsoever. All right, so... And, and John chapter 8 is, is great evidence for that. All right. To make a short story long, all right. the devil is a liar and there is no truth in him. I think. Yep, yeah, right there. For he is a liar and the father of it. Right, when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. There is no truth. Because there is no truth in him, there is no truth in the false prophet and the false prophet just represents all the false teachings it's not one man it's not some kid who's got a 666 tattoo on his forehead or on his you know top of his head covered by his hair 
You watch too many movies, man. It, that's not it at all. This is talking about the spirit, the spiritual false prophet, which is almost everybody in the world today. All right, it's, and there's no truth at all in what they teach. But this is narrowed down in a spiritual term to mean all the false teaching. All right, and the beast is represented by the world. This world is the beast. And the, it, it's the fourth beast of Daniel, to be specific. The beast of Revelation is the same beast as the fourth beast of Daniel. The beast of the world is the, the world. And this world, it's the way of the world. It's the, the structure of the world. It's going to be taken. And it's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. It's going to be done away with forever. This world and all the false teachings in this world are going to be done away with forever. Okay. So just, just so there's no confusion, there's no reason to be confused about this. Unless you're listening to false teachers. All right. And there's a lot of them. So my advice, very simple. Believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. The key to understanding the Word of God. And this is how you get more knowledge, more understanding than those guys with the million dollar suits that stand behind the pulpit and have all the power. This is how you gain more. This is how you gain advantage over them. And that is to actually believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. That is a thing that they do not do.